I want to talk about colon cancer, colorectal cancer. What I would recommend if you wanted to prevent colon cancer, or if you had colon cancer and you had it dealt with, what I would do to prevent it from coming back. All right, number one, I would recommend CLA, and I would recommend eating foods that are high in CLA. Now, what does CLA stand for? Conjugated linoleic acid. Did you realize that CLA is the only natural fatty acid that's accepted by the National Academy of Science for having consistent anti-tumor properties? And it just so happens that CLA is in red meat and dairy, specifically grass-fed red meat and dairy, not the grain-fed that you would normally get in, the, in your local grocery store. Now, it's fascinating to me, if you were to look up colon cancer, mainstream is going to tell you to avoid red meat and dairy. Of course, they won't differentiate if it's grass-fed or grain-fed. But what I found, which is interesting, if you ever wanted to find the truth of something in the health field, is to find out what the mainstream opinion is on certain things, as far as in health, you know, what all the scientists agree on. And the truth is going to be in the exact opposite direction. So grass-fed red meat in certain dairy is high in this fatty acid, which does have anti-tumor effects. And the second thing I would recommend, and this is very, very important, is fermented veggies and fermented dairy. It has significant anti-cancer properties in animals. Uh, so we have kefir, okay? We have kimchi, which is fermented cabbage and peppers. Then we have fermented cucumbers, as in pickles. Fermented cabbage, as in sauerkraut. Fermented olives. All of these have been demonstrated to show some really cool effects on uh, cancer and tumors. And what's interesting about fermentation is that your gut is constantly fermenting carbohydrates, specifically fiber. It's turning fiber into small chain fatty acids, which directly inhibit the growth of colon cancer, okay? So fermented vegetables and dairy, significant anti-cancer effects. So you want to consume probably fermented vegetables on a regular basis, probably with each meal. Probiotics have an effect on cancer cells that is called apoptosis, which is basically the cause of cancer cell to commit suicide. So probiotics are very important to take on a regular basis. Find a very high quality probiotic. Number four, fasting. Number four is probably the most important out of all of these, but fasting has a direct inhibitory effect on colorectal cancer. Plus, fasting gives your GI tract a chance to reset. It's a very low stress benefit to your GI system. Plus, your microbes, the natural probiotic microorganisms in your gut, increase in diversity when you fast. So when you starve these microbes, they start thriving and they become stronger. And 70 to 80% of your immune system is in your gut. Fascinating. All right, number five, fiber turns into small chain fatty acids, which directly inhibit the growth of colon cancer. Now, what kind of fiber would I recommend? Vegetable fiber, not grain fiber, which is inflammatory not some individual fiber that you would get in a powder form. I would get your fiber from vegetables, low starch leafy greens. Why? Because number six, veggies have strong anti-cancer effects by themselves with the phytonutrients. So I'm talking about the cruciferous vegetables. I'm talking about a lot of other vegetables as well. They can create a significant decrease in the risk of colorectal cancer. So a lot of these cross over, you have vegetables over here. If you ferment the vegetables and then the fiber in the vegetables are a prebiotic, which then feeds the microbes, which are the probiotics, that then make short chain fatty acids, which then inhibit the cancer. But these six things right here, I think are very, very important in the prevention of colorectal cancer. Thanks for watching.